The history of modern art shows that America offered a fertile environment for some of the most important photographic pioneers of the 20th century. Perhaps it was Paul Strand who carved out the most unique position among them. Strand is often discussed as the architect of the so-called straight photography. This pure photographic style utilized large format cameras to record and bring new perspectives to ordinary or previously ignored subjects in the name of fine art. Strand's straight aesthetic proved so persuasive that it was adopted by other luminaries in the photographic circle. The straight ideal formed part of the clarion call for the famous F64 group, who shared similar ideals with Strand. Yet Strand pushed forward by extending the straight aesthetic to the field of documentary. He became highly regarded and something of a standard bearer for those in pursuit of social and political redress through both the still and moving image. In reflecting on the legacy of Paul Strand, we recognize not only his artistic contributions, but also his profound impact on the intersection of photography and society. As we delve deeper into his life and work, we uncover not just a photographer, but a visionary whose images resonate with timeless significance. Nathaniel Paul Stransky was born on October 16 in New York City, United States, to German-Jewish parents in 1890. His father, Jacob Stransky, gave him his first camera when he was only 12 years old, although Strand's interest in photography did not blossom until he left high school in 1907. Upon graduation, Strand began working in his father's enamelware import business, but he used his spare time to attend a photographic club at the Ethical Culture School run by renowned social documentarian Lewis Hine. Strand decided on his future following a club field trip to Alfred Stieglitz and Edward Steichen's 291 Gallery. 
Inspired by the visit, Strand was emboldened to seek feedback on his own work from the older Stieglitz, who provided Strand with very constructive criticism, from which he learned an enormous amount. That visit along with the influence of Heinz's socialist outlook represented a pivotal moment for Strand, who at the age of 17, declared his intention to become an artist in photography. Strand's professional relationship with Stieglitz dates back to 1915 when Strand's soft focus pictorialism drew stinging criticism from Stieglitz, the ardent modernist. Strand realized that if he were to be taken seriously as an artist in photography, he would have to develop a signature technique of his own. He acknowledged as much in the following quotation. You may see and be affected by other people's ways, you may even use them to find your own, but eventually you will have to free yourself of them. This sentiment echoes Nietzsche's words when he said, I have just read Schopenhauer, now I have to get rid of him. Indeed, as a direct result of Stieglitz's earlier criticism, Strand spent two years developing the style that would become known as straight photography. Strand declared that the measure of an artist's talent, or his genius if you will, is the richness he finds in such a life's voyage of discovery and the effectiveness with which he is able to embody it through his chosen medium. It was a measure of his own talent, then that he became revered as a figure who had set out some of the very precepts on which modernist photography would be defined. Stieglitz had in fact been so impressed with Strand's artistic maturation that he adopted the straight photography aesthetic for his own work. Strand knew he had arrived when in 1917, Stieglitz gave him a major exhibition at the 291 Gallery and then devoted the last two issues of his photography magazine camera work entirely to Strand's work. Writing around the same time, Strand published an article entitled Photography and the New God, in which he summed up the straight philosophy as follows. Through its pure and intelligent use, the camera can become an instrument of a new kind of vision, of untouched possibilities, related to but not encroaching upon painting or the other plastic arts. On the back of his role as a medical cinematographer, Strand was inspired in 1921 to collaborate with the painter and commercial photographer Charles Sheeler on a short, silent film called Manhattan, also known as New York the Magnificent. The film which documented the bustle of everyday street life under the architectural shadows of the looming New York skyline reflected Strand's aesthetic preoccupations and is considered by some to be the first American avant-garde film. However, it was a little later that Strand's approach became more transparently political. He made the wave in 1934 documenting the economic problems faced by a Mexican fishing community and with the American filmmaker Per Lawrence, The Plow That Broke the Plains in 1935, a film that addressed the Dust Bowl situation facing the Great Plains region of the United States and Canada following a period of uncontrolled agricultural farming. Soon after, in 1936, Strand joined the American photographer Berenice Abbott to set up the Photo League, a group of photographers committed to raising social awareness of trade union activities and civil rights protests. Four years later, Strand co-directed with Leo Hurwitz, Native Land, a civil liberties-themed docudrama narrated by the prominent African-American singer, actor, and activist Paul Robeson. Strand acknowledged that life is so complex that the artist is presented with all sorts of possibilities. That being the case, he maintained that the said artist should be able to avoid doing the same thing over and over again. His photography, while still produced according to the codes of his straight aesthetic, relied on prose and poetry to give them fuller meaning. 
The new tone was set in 1950 with the publication of Time in New England. The book was edited by the American photography critic Nancy Newhall, who matched Strand's images with an anthology of New England writings dating from the 17th century to the present day. In 1951, Strand moved to Orgival, France, where he settled with his wife Hazel Kingsbury. From there, Strand embarked on a series of projects abroad. His visits to Italy, Egypt, Morocco, Romania, the Outer Hebrides, and Ghana gave rise to a series of photogeographic books featuring people, landscapes, and text. For instance, he collaborated with Claude Roy on France in Profile in 1952, with the Italian neorealist screenwriter Cesare Zavattini on A Country in 1955, and for Ghana an African portrait, shot in the early 1960s but not published until 1976. Paul Strand died after a long illness on March 31, 1976 at his home in Orgival, Evelyn's France. In 1984, Strand was honored in the International Photography Hall of Fame for capturing everyday life with precision and authenticity. Regardless of whether we see Strand as the sole pioneer of straight photography, it's clear that his work popularized the idea that only a camera could capture the world with such detail and clarity. In capable hands, Photography could be a valuable form of art within the modernist movement. Photography expert Graham Clark suggested that Strand should be remembered alongside other photographers like Stieglitz, who shared a similar vision. 
These artists contributed to the notion that a modern photographer was akin to an inspired philosopher, capable of transforming reality into something new and ideal. What set Strand apart from his peers was his commitment to portraying not only beauty but also social realities. Unlike the romanticized image of the artist as a virtuosic genius, Strand believed in the collective power of art for change. His legacy is summed up in a powerful idea. Art and freedom are intertwined with the struggle for political and economic freedom of society as a whole.